Last time we met, we were finishing off for the winter break where we were in 10th place after 21 matches with 28 points and 13 points clear of the relegation zone. We were presented with this intake preview which didn't look very appealing but we could work with it. What I haven't shown you is the development centre and the fact that we've got a right back who is looking like a player that could potentially be someone I bring into the first team sooner rather than later. Admittedly, he's not amazing right now, has injury prone issues and is not very consistent, but we could use him and make him a star if we give him some first team football. That is the dream at least anyway. He's already played three times for me this season. With the finances being 1.1 million, I'm starting to look at other projects for the team and see what we can improve in. And hopefully we can improve the training facilities after they were rejected last time out. Especially after we've just been given a brand new deal. So, let's go to the youth intake, shall we? Since we last met, we have come back and have played a number of matches. We lost in the Polish Cup quarter final, unfortunately, but we have avoided defeat in almost every other game apart from Lekker Warsaw, who destroyed us 5 0, and that's pretty why we lost in the Cup. But at least we got revenge on the team that beat us in the Cup, beating them 2 1 after they beat us 2 1 before. But still, we've had just the five games in the league. We're looking like we're doing okay. In fact, we're now in the top half and we have enough points to say that we should be safe from relegation now, which is really, really promising. We're actually also only eight points away from a top four finish. Though I'm not planning on saying that European football is ultimately what we can get this year. We just need to make sure we survive first and foremost, especially now that we're out of the cup. However, we just had a youth intake and it's a good one apparently, so at least we can now claim the youth intake wasn't a complete lie. It was just half a star less than what we were expecting. However, the only issue is it's only about three players that are four and a half star or more in potential and only five players that are three and a half star potential or more, so let's go with those five players. Michelle Polina is the person that has got my attention though. An exciting midfielder who could also be a DM. And I am just going to say who now. I could play this guy as Mazala, Or he could be a deep line playmaker. Or he could be a box to box. Not a very good one. But he's definitely Mazala Or a deep line playmaker. It's one of the two. And I'm excited about this guy. Because I know that even though he's unambitious. We can absolutely make him better. If we give him the right mentoring group. It's a shame. He's not very consistent. So we've got a centre back who could also play as a left back and a DM. And gotta be honest with you, don't see the DM in him, but I definitely see a centre back, even if he's not the best in the world. He's six foot, he's left footed, but he's also only got eight heading, eleven jumping reach. But his tackling is good, so there's that. He's also could be a good leader. He's just not very determined, which is an issue. If we can improve his mentals, he could be really good, especially now we know. He's actually very, very consistent, and that's exciting. The last of the exciting players is this guy, Joukowsky. I am just going to say him now. Box to box immediately comes to mind. Even if he can, well, I say box to box. He's not really a box to box, is he? He's a player that I will probably have to play box to box because of, because of where I do my thing, because of my tactics. But he's got 12 tackling, so it could definitely work. He's definitely a ball in midfielder first and foremost, but if I can make him better, then we can make him better. I'm definitely going to train as a box-to-box -box though, so we can get more attributes improving. But yeah, he probably doesn't fit my tactic annoyingly enough. He is slightly consistent though, so it's not terrible. And he's not got a bad personality, so it's not the end of the world. So, Bukowski is a player that I genuinely didn't think I'd be covering because of, you know, the fact he's only got three and a half star potential ability but winger has potential not amazing inverted winger probably not ideal to do when he's left footed and it's a left wing he's playing from but again what can you do the last person is smudder and yeah this guy feels like a very very defensive midfielder kind of player deep line playmaker for me is what i'm looking at him thinking and I just see deep line playmaker i really do that's why i can see other guy so now that we've looked over all the players Let's go to the end of the season and see where we finished. Well, we've had a lot of games since the youth intake and we've had eight, in fact. What I wasn't expecting was to struggle as much as I have in the last eight games. Admittedly, 
some of the games we had were against the best teams in the country. Let's hear and let's hear the two that came to mind. But we won two of our first three matches. And I'm thinking, okay, we're doing well. Admittedly, the team that we lost in the second game was actually a team that's underperformed massively. So I wasn't too concerned. I was slightly concerned when we then didn't win for three matches, which again, not ideal. We then beat Gornick to get a third win in seven matches before we blew a two goal lead in the last game of the season against Rizla and lost 4 3. So, not ideal that. It was a very frustrating game. And I feel like any other time we probably would have won, but we didn't. And I don't think it made a massive deal in the long term, really. Especially since we only finished in 10th. And I say only because it felt like at one point we could have finished as high as 8th. Because we were winning. And I think results between teams would have stopped us again in 8th phase anyway. Because of the fact we didn't beat Radom that time. And we lost against early in the season as well. So there's that. But the top 4 teams. Honestly, I was expecting those 4 teams to be the top 4. Apart from Pagon. I think Pagon were not expected to be there. So let's double check this. No, they were the top 4. In fact, Rekov was the team that underachieved and finished outside the top 5. When they should have been in the top 5. So other than that, they were all doing quite well. And in fact, Rekov only missed out of the top five by one position anyway. So really, they didn't have a, a terrible season. The fact we finished 12 points off the European places, but finished 22 points clear of the relegation zone is great. There was a shock relegation though, and that was not expected. Apparently, this team were expected to do much better than what they did. And to finish in 16th place when they were expected to finish in 7th is not ideal for them. And that could hurt the reputation big time. But that happens, doesn't it? So let's go over the season with you. So yeah, season with you. Confetti's falling. Another good season as far as we're concerned. Yeah, Kamel we got rid of. We actually got rid of Sebastian Rack as well. Uh, I think we released him apparently. But yeah, we also got rid of this guy. We got rid of some players and we just didn't see the point of keeping them. We... Loaned out two players. One of them got a lot of football. The other two didn't get as much football they wanted to. And that wasn't the end of the world. But here we are now. We're told to only attempt to avoid relegation. And yet we get a mid table finish. Which honestly, great season. Great start to the year. And the fact that we did have a really bad start. And weren't 16 players after 10 matches. Great. Quarterfinals. Best ever run in the cup so far. I'm hoping that my... Record of never getting past the quarterfinal in the Serbian Cup is not going to be repeated in this series for 17 years because that would be awkward if it does. Biggest win was a 5 0 win in the Cup, which no one's shocked is the case. The fact we won 3 2 against Whistler Plot and we took a winner in the 94th minute to get it is great. The goal this season was actually very early on, two minutes in to this game that we gained our first ever win of the season with. So let's see that goal, shall we? So this is a really good team goal, apparently. And Waddell finds Wabiki. He plays it across. And, oh, I remember this goal. Yes. I do remember that goal because it was really well worked. And it was just two minutes into the game we got it as well. So that was nice. And it told me that we were able to get something. It was the game that really gave me hope that we could do well this year because it was our first ever win in the league. And it was really, really nice. So hopefully we can keep that up in the future. Finances. So we made more sponsorship money this year. We made more money in every avenue. The fact we made 1.1 million in broadcast revenue is really delightful. I'm hoping we'll be a two and a half star team sooner rather than later. But corporate hospitality, prize money and match day commercial retail all going up as well is useful. We sold 1,263 shirts, which is beautiful. And we made 55,000 in merchandise, with 5,560 going out of the country. Team of the year wasn't ideal that nobody got above a 7.1, but we didn't have anyone below a 6.8, which is honestly quite good. And it just tells them that, yes, we could be enjoying a very good season. The fact I actually had a goalkeeper that played 19 games being the best goalkeeper says a lot. I did rotate my goalkeeper a little bit. And I actually substituted my goalkeeper off in the second half. In the last game of the year. Because I was getting frustrated with how badly he was doing. Which I think tells you just maybe that I've just lost faith in the goalkeeper I have. So you see what I mean in the bit. Accolades. Jacob got the fan player this season. And young player this season again. And Piotr Kakles was the man with the goals this season. Suter was the man with the most goals, 19, Rubiki with 8 assists this year, 
and Jacob got the most play of the matches and highest average rating. Well, Shockey got the most passes per 90, 73. Still haven't got a hat trick hero yet, which is surprising, but there you go. And Jacob Sutar is now officially the record holder for the most league goals ever scored. And Polina made an appearance at the age of 15 years and 155 days. We sold a player for 51,000 in Camille, who's actually playing, which is annoying. Well, Pietro Cagliese is not only the man with the fastest ever goal, 1 minute and 90 seconds, but he's also the oldest goal scorer of 32 years and 280 days. History in the making. Your hard work and effort paid off on the pitch, and such a feat didn't go unrewarded at our end of season award ceremony. Moto Lublin owed everything to a fantastic start of the season. Moto Lublin started better than anyone would have expected and really slipped up afterwards. Thank you, Dominic. And the timeline is here. And I think this is a good sign, personally, that we are doing better and better. Remember when these records said, oh, where's the goal? Those points tally. That's now changing because it's gotten even worse. And we have actually kept some of our players for five years now, which is really, really good. And apparently, we've set an unwanted record in the league where we just earned 48 points, which I think is a lie. That's not a bad tally at all. Personally, but that's just me. But yeah, we also received 419,000 for finishing 10th place in the league, which is really, really useful. It means we now have 1.3 million in the bank. The supporter profile update is also very useful because we're now got an extra 3,000 fans, but they're actually more family orientated, which is great for me because it now means they're more patient. And I love that. I really love that. So hopefully that will continue to be a good thing in the long term for us. As for the club vision expectation, Attempt to avoid relegation again. It tells me that we do not have a lot of expectations going forward for the last couple of years. So I'm happy with that because it means that we can just take our time with this and not feel pressurized at all. The fact we've also got a lot of things that we can work towards, like play defensively solid football, possession football, and high tempo pressing football, and they're all happy with that, is really useful indeed as well. The fact we've also got a player that got second place in the top goal scoring in the league in our first season in Jacob is very useful. He's getting better now, and I think you can understand why I'm a bit excited when I see he's doing better. He hates big matches though, but he's also only a decent second tier player now, which makes you wonder how on earth has he been doing so well in the league for us with these goals? He's got 39 goals so far, for goodness sake. But yeah, we also had a player that made the player of the season on the bench, which I thought was pretty cool, and it told me that we were doing well. So maybe, just maybe, we can do more, but... Now let's go to the very end of the season where we see who goes up, who goes down and some other bits and pieces I didn't know was coming. So I'll see in a bit. Somehow I missed this and it didn't come through until later, but we suddenly received 1.1 million not too long after the season review happened. And I was thinking, oh my God, that's great. Good stuff for us. We then got a wage budget of 33,000 and a transfer budget of 1.92 million, which holy smokes, that tells me we've got a lot of money now. And we do 2 million, but only after one thing happened. But at the same time, we got the 1.1 million. Our facilities have apparently were downgraded because they weren't as good as they once were. So I decided I need to fix that quickly. So I did. I got the board to agree to this. Now, I don't know why the message part hasn't shown up, but I don't care as long as it works. 400,000 we spent to make this better. And if it's done by October and it works, that's great. We also managed to improve the junior coaching to now be good, which is better, 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 better. Hopefully, it means that our youth development players that come through the academy are better on arrival. We had to convince the board to agree to this, though, and eventually they did. So we now got excellent youth recruitment, which, as far as I'm concerned, is perfect. And we've got that in our pocket now. Hooray! Good, good stuff. But we know the teams that are coming up, and our cut of all teams are one of them. They finished in second place. What did Los are the team that's coming up as champions, while LKS Los are coming up as the playoff winners. So we know who's going up, and that's perfect. We also know who's also going down, and only one of the teams that came up with us is going down, and that's the team that finished in second, and probably the biggest surprise outside of us to be promoted. So at least we know... We're not completely hopeless. And the team that we went up with, we're actually pretty good. 
But now to go over the European competitions and Tottenham have won the Europa Conference, which means they've won their first trophy in God knows how long. Since the League Cup, right? Harry Kane only got 19 goals in this competition. Milan beat Real Betis in the Europa League final, so they've won a trophy, a European trophy for the first time since the Champions League. But Real Madrid have beaten Liverpool in the Champions League final again. It's almost as if it's going to happen every single time, isn't it? But yes, Liverpool won the first two Champions League trophies in this save. Real Madrid have broken that to now win the second in four. So, happy days for them, I suppose. But this is a player that I am wanting to talk about, and I think... I'm about to let this guy go on a free transfer end of this contract because I just don't have a lot of faith in him anymore. He sees a lot of goals. He only had three clean sheets this year, had a 6.71 average rating, and he's 34. He's not getting any better. He's got a young talent that's coming through that's going to be better than him. And actually, he's already better than him now. So we have got Perel, who I think is better, and he's only 22. He's young. But I think now that we can get rid of Lucas and it would make sense to do so. So I'm actually going to convince my, I'm convinced myself that we will get rid of this guy. I am not going to play this guy anymore. I even took this guy off in the last game because of how badly he was doing. And I'm just sick and tired of him being useless. He got 6.1 in the last match. I think that tells you why I'm replacing him and potentially getting rid of this guy. And yes, I'm letting this guy go because I don't think he's good enough for us. And he just didn't perform when I needed him to perform, and that's a shame, really. It really is. If way, though, I'm going to end this here. I hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys like and share this video and like, subscribe to the channel. It really does help me a lot. Do you consider 10th place to be a successful first season in this division? I think so, personally, especially when I look at the fact that we're still expected to be bottom of the table. At least the odds now are down to 700 to 1. Perfect. But either way, until next time, goodbye and well. Good night.